I love finding new plants. And this is a plant that I found 12 years ago. And I have not given this to anyone except one person. And we're in his garden now. I gave him one single plant about three years ago. Now this plant is known as the Japanese windflower. It is also known as anemone japonica. Now the Japanese windflower, because it produces seed pods, that if you have a lot of wind, they blow through your yard with this white, fluffy, uh, it's really light and airy. But if you look at it, this is the maximum height. I, mean, I just went through my garden at my parents' house yesterday, and some of the anemones were this tall, and they start to fall over. But look at this. For the first two years, this anemone is not much taller than my kneecaps. Nice and short, but, you know, when they get three or four years old, this is the maximum height that they get. Fantastic plant. Now, this is fall. Uh, for most of us, it's going to be something like, I'd say, the first two weeks in October. It might even start the end of September. My name is Mark Viette. I live in the Shenandoah Valley. That's our client myth that we have. But look at the solid amount of flowers. So just a few of these plants um, that were transplanted, they make a great border for the house. They're nice and green, but then in the fall, they have these beautiful flowers. And if you turn the flowers around, they sort of have different colors on the reverse. Now, one thing that you're going to notice, and I noticed this on daffodils, is look at it, and wow, all the flowers are facing one way. There's not many flowers facing me. They're all facing where the sun rises. So the sun rises over there, and most of the day, probably till about 3 o'clock, it is full sun. That is what the way that these, the, or this type of an enemy faces. So if you're thinking of planting it in your garden, you're going to want the sun to your back so the flowers face you. Regardless, it's beautiful. Let me show you how to propagate this plant. Drop. You can propagate this plant in the spring and in the fall. Fall is one of the best. But what you're going to first want to do is shear this. And I mean, when, you know, when I use the word shear, I mean shear really hard. So you're going to come in and you're going to go ahead. And some of us might wear knee pads. But you're going to come in here and shear it short. Because when you divide it, you don't need a lot of leaves. So you're going to shear it short just like this. And dig down. And if it's dry, it may not be as easy. little dividing table. Just going to move it down a little bit. I'm going to come in here and shake the soil off these plants. And 
what I am able to do is in some cases pull apart these stems of the anemone. That is one nice plant. They'll be connected possibly by roots. There is a second plant. Here is a third plant. Here's number four. Number five. Number six. Seven. So, this would be something you would put in a small container. I might put two or three together. Even this right here is a plant. But if you look closely at, and I'm just going to put it right here against my shirt. If you look here, these are roots that you're looking at, and they call them adventitious shoots. They're little growths or new stems. So this is going to be next year's stem. So this is going to look something like this or turn into this next year. So, another easy way to propagate, and if, I, and, and if I dig, you'll see so many of these little uh, roots with shoots. What we do is take, a, and, and always I like to use a sharp knife. So here is a stem with a shoot right there, another shoot right here, Another shoot here. So I see three shoots. So if you look here, you can see the little shoots growing. And you can see the shoot. Here's another one right here. Let's see if we can pull this one out. And I'll, I'll sever this root. I sever them in three inch pieces. And if you look right here, I see one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new growths or adventitious shoots on this stem. This is probably something that I would call a root cutting. If this was the oriental poppy, you wouldn't see these shoots. You take your root cuttings and then within three to four months, you'll see shoots. But what you do with this is you just take your finger and you wrap your, this stem around your finger just like this. And take this that's kind of, kind of wrapped and you're going to put it in a small pot. You're going to put it in a pot that may be at the most three inches deep maybe two inches wide, filled with three quarters of a good soilless mix. And then you lay this uh, cluster that you've wrapped in your little pot and you put about a quarter of an inch of soil. These roots will continue to grow throughout the winter in like a overwintering house or some people even take uh, their home and build a little greenhouse against the home with no heat. And by May, you're going to have a whole cluster of new plants on this anemone. Now, I may not have mentioned one thing. It's one of my favorites. If you're one of those few people who pay attention and look in your yard, you might find something unusual. Uh, I had someone call me, they had a, an astilbe with bronze foliage. And then next to it, they found an astilbe with gold foliage. Well, I have decided I'm going to patent this plant. And it is one of the anemones that if you see here, we were talking about sun. It loves the sun. Sun and certain or some anemones don't like the sun that much. The more sun this anemone gets, the better it's going to grow. 
So I could make just by digging a couple more feet here, and and you know if you just went right down to the ground here, you could pull up some of these shoots. And if you look here, is another anemone shoot, and another one, and another one. So I might cut this one off and maybe this one off and pot the rest. And out of this, if I wanted to make plants, I could probably make 350 new plants just out of this section of three year old anemones. These anemones that I dug, could dry out very quickly. So it's important to put them in a bag just as soon as you dig them. Usually they don't require water or it may rot the roots, but this bag should, um, was sealed and folded over. And here are some examples of some of those plants with, as you can see, some of the new shoots growing and there's a nice shoot right there growing off the root. Here is another shoot. And there is another shoot here. And as you see here, there are more shoots. So what I'm going to do is prepare the soil. And kind of lay these. Some I'll plant deeper. Like this. But some of these with the roots uh, and the shoots... I'm going to kind of lay them on the ground and put about two inches of soil on top. No more than two inches of soil. In preparing the soil, since I want these to produce a lot more roots, I'm going to use a slightly different Costa Maine soil. This is the raised bed mix, which is great. Now, you can see it's very fine. And that's sort of what I want for these. Something a little finer to mix in the soil. So, what you're going to do... Loosen the soil. I'm going to plant these a little different than I would other plants. So instead of planting and digging an individual hole for each plant, I'm going to go ahead and dig out this area. And bring back some of the soil. Then... What I'm going to do is take these plants that you see here and lay them sort of in this hole, just like this. And again, the roots, laying them flat. with an average of two inches on top of the anemones. And that's all you have to do. And next year, this will be a solid mass planting of that new and one-of-a-kind anemone. There's nothing like it in this world.